the Wrestling Report series of newsletters was a newsletter about wrestling written by Greg Oliver with the help of Serge Solsky and Chris Holt. How'd you get into writing the Wrestling Reports? You know, it was uh, 1985. Hulkamania was running rampant. Um, everybody was talking about WWF in the schoolyard. And uh, I got swept up in it all. Uh, it happened to coincide when my dad uh, got our family an Apple IIe computer. And one of the early programs we got was a desktop publishing program. And so my brother and I, we played around with the clip art and you add some text around it. And then all of a sudden, you know, we came up with a newsletter, not knowing that there were other newsletters out there in the world at all. Uh, my dad took the work, made a few copies, we sold some at school, we, you know, sold some at his office, and we were off and running. How did you find time to make all the reports? I mean, you had school and everything. That's true. I was in high school. Uh, you find a balance. Um, you know, I still did the things I like to do. I was involved in scouting. Uh, you know, we had friends, you'd hang out, you'd, you went out and did some things here and there, or you go to your brother's soccer games or hockey games or whatever it is. But you tried to find time for things you liked to do, and I liked wrestling at the time a lot. And we'd find time to go to the shows. Mom and Dad were very supportive. When I was old enough to drive, I'd start going to the shows myself. The writing itself didn't take a ton of time. Uh, the layout took a little bit of time. The real time was in, uh, you'd have to lay it all out, uh, print it out, take it to the printer, which my dad got it done at work. Uh, then you'd sometimes you'd have to staple it if it hadn't been collated uh, at the printer. And then you had to stuff it in envelopes, you had to dress those envelopes, you had to put stamps on those envelopes, you had to close them, you had to get them to the mailbox. That's the stuff that took a lot of time. So, uh, how did people, like, learn about it? It uh, was a slow process. Uh, at the beginning it was friends, you know, people we knew at school or through church or wherever it may be, certainly my dad's work. They'd be buying them and taking them home to their kids, uh, who everybody was talking about wrestling at the time. Uh, but what really set us, uh, really helped us uh, organize and get uh, better coverage in, in Southern Ontario especially was Norman DaCosta had a wrestling column in the Toronto Star and he plugged us a couple of times and then all of a sudden we had subscribers uh, right across the uh, Ontario. Um, the, but you know I'd go to a wrestling show, I would have flyers made up and hand them out uh, and then around 1988 uh, Ed Whalen who was a um, announcer out of Calgary. He had a show on TSN called uh, Pro Wrestling Plus and so he plugged us on the show a few times and that gave us subscribers right across the country. Um, then there's other things you get you know mentions in, in magazines or especially other newsletters. Uh, you know there are other guys out there doing this. I learned the uh, same thing I was. They just maybe covered a different territory so I especially tried to switch to focus a lot more on the Canadian territories than I had initially. But how'd you deal with all the publicity and stuff? Uh, it was actually, the Kitchen Water the Record was really supportive. Um, I can still remember the, the writer's name was Jennifer Wells. She came out really early in the process and, and wrote a story about my brother uh, and I and Serge Solsky, uh, who were the three guys who, who you know started it initially. Uh, so she did an article about us. That got us a lot of subscribers around, you know, the Kitchener-Waterloo area of uh, Southern Ontario. Um, later, Bonnie Malik and that was the TV writer. She became a big supporter of mine. And uh, when there was a point that Mom and Dad wanted me to shut down, and I told all my subscribers, I didn't really want to do it, but Mom and Dad want me to shut down. She organized a reporter to come out to me at camp. I was out camping with the scouts for a week um, and they came out and interviewed me at camp. Uh, so that was one of those uh, unbeknownst to mom and dad uh, ways of getting around them by getting a lot of publicity. Uh, there were a couple other occasions where I did TV shows. Um, right at the end I remember doing uh, a show on uh, CTV in Kitchener. So I got pretty comfortable uh, doing media interviews and calling people and it was all a great uh, lead in to going to journalism school in Toronto. So when and why did you stop writing the wrestling report? It was a tough decision, but I, I knew I needed some closure. Um, in uh, August 1990, I did the last issue, 
and I knew I was going off to Ryerson uh, Polytechnic University to study journalism in September 1990. So it was a good good time to end it. Um, I purposely didn't write about wrestling at Ryerson for my three years to get my degree there. Uh, that's not exactly true. I did one or two stories. I'd still go to the shows. I still had lots of friends in wrestling, which proved to be really great because it wasn't too much longer. Uh, wrestling boomed again, 1996, uh, and I'm involved with the uh, startup of Canoe.ca, and uh, all of a sudden we're doing the Slam Wrestling website. And uh, I've never really stopped writing about wrestling. So when I say it's 30 years, it was 30 years, but the basis was the Canadian Wrestling Report. What was the content, and what did you like about that specific content? We had a lot of different stuff. We had a lot of news, wrestling news from here and there that you'd get from various places. Uh, well, looking back, that stuff was kind of amateurish. Uh, what was kind of neat though, we had a lot of columnists. Uh, Terry Dart uh, did his jar, jar full of memories uh, and he would bring out old things. There was another guy named Howdy Doody who was from, uh, that was his name, Don Doody. And he was out from uh, BC and so he wrote another sort of nostalgia column uh, we had some interviews, uh, surprisingly. Uh, Serge got to talk to the British Bulldogs. We had Road War Animal, Ivan Koloff, Gino Brito. Uh, it's kind of neat to look back on some of those. Uh, the, guy, the bigger names, besides the Southern Ontario guys, uh, I owe a lot to guys like Ricky Johnson and, and Wayne Cashman, referee Wayne Casibo, uh, that, that allowed me into the wrestling world a little bit. Uh, Johnny Canine, especially. Uh, he let me do uh, newsletters, or yeah, I did a program for him that I was able to also publicize my newsletter at his shows. Uh, so I became a part of the wrestling scene, uh, and that was really what the newsletter evolved into, was a lot more about people and profiles than just the news, and, and I'm kind of proud of that growth that happened. Who was your favorite wrestler when you were writing the wrestling report, and who's your favorite wrestler currently? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, certainly Hulkamania drew me in, but what kept me around were the bad guys, you know, your Roddy Roddy Pipers. Uh, I was uh, gorgeous Greggy Oliver when we would wrestle out in the side of the side of the house. Um, it, it somehow didn't turn out that way, but that's so I, I like George, gorgeous Jimmy Garvin and Ravishing Rick Rude. Um, you know, there were a lot of those heels that I certainly liked the most. Um, today's wrestlers, I, I appreciate a different kind of style. I mean, I really like the guys that can entertain me. Uh, and that can perform great in the ring. Uh, guys like Cesaro, uh, Tyson Kidd, um, you know, they're, they're, they're great. Uh, and, and I can watch a lot of their matches again and again. I can't say that about uh, some of the bigger stars, you know. It's just not something I get into, Randy Orton or John Cena or whatever. But I understand there's a great place for them. And, and in some cases, well, in almost all these cases, I've met them or interviewed them. And they're, they're generally good dudes and dudettes. Thanks for the interview, but before we go, can you show us a couple of your highlights from the wrestling reports? Sure. So, I did up a little, you know, booklet of some of the stuff. This is a great old quote that I found that, it's not attributed, but I'll read it to you. Somewhere in that great gray void, mixed between reality and fantasy, there exists the much maligned, oft laughed at, and seldom understood attraction known as professional wrestling. Perhaps in the final evaluation, pro wrestling is a microcosm of real life, complete with its heroes and its bad guys, flakes and warriors, hardy and weak, the straight and bent, those searching for reality and those trying to hide from it. I was a little bit of both. Um, so yeah, there's another one here. Is wrestling fake? For those who believe, no explanation is needed. For those who don't, no explanation is possible. Well, you got to remember I was doing this before they revealed that wrestling was all fake. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures, uh, Ric Flair against Nikita Koloff that I got a great shot of with Tommy Young. I didn't get to meet the British Bulldogs, but Serge did, so there's autographs there. Uh, King Kong Masta and Milton Bruskin were key to helping me as well, uh, especially access to a lot of great stars. Uh, Cowboy Frankie Lee in there, I forgot I met him, so I interviewed him years later, he just passed away. Um, all these guys I met over the years, Ivan Koloff, Animal, Rocky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express, Lil Ani Kai, Judy Martin, wow. I, I, I was in the Bret Hart fan club. Some people might find that surprising. Um, Joey War, you go, Big John Studd, I didn't meet him. That was the, Dominic Danucci became a good friend over the years. Uh, here's a poem I wrote. I don't know, do you want to hear this poem? Ode to the Wrestler. I don't think I've read this forever. 
uh, April 1986 by Greg Oliver. I am a wrestler, fierce and proud, a shake of my hair, a cry from the crowd. We have a history full of glory and fun, champs and challengers, matches lost and won. The champion's glory, the loser's pain, friends and enemies, one and the same. There is a goal, known to a few, ten pounds of gold around muscular sinew. I love the action, the sight, the sound, no better athlete will ever be found. It takes dedication, blood and guts too, wrestling, I love you. Oh my god, did I really write that? Uh, Johnny Canine, Franchi Lamont, Tiger Jackson, Little Buffalo, and he's passed away. Uh, fan clubs were important, so the UAWF was a fan club. I got to go down to Memphis and hang out. So I met Kerry Von Eric, Lance Russell, who I've met a few times now. Uh, Greg, I love you, from the Boogie Woogie Man. Um, so that was a great time. There, I met Luthez when I was like 17 years old, and then interviewed him many times over the years. Uh, then the next year was in Chicago, and yeah, Jimmy Valiant, Nick Bockwinkel, uh, some of my buddies are still my buddies, uh, you know, there's Jim Connolly, uh, still a good friend, Harry White who passed away recently, Wade Keller I'll see in July, um, then they would have wrestling events wherever and we'd just be fans out there, so there's an autograph from Sting and Tom Zank, uh, the late great bullwhip Danny Johnson, uh, Johnny Canine with my newsletter again. Uh, Buddy Wayne, when we went out to the East Coast uh, and saw matches out in the, mis in the, the Maritimes. Uh, Soul Man Johnson, who I mentioned. Uh, you're just writing back and forth to people, right? So, Dick Beddoes was a famous columnist for the Globe and Mail. And here he wrote, to Greg Oliver, good luck uh, to all wrestling fans everywhere. So, he was a wrestling fan. Uh, he wrote about it occasionally. Um, and then, actually, the nice little send-off was April 1990. Uh, WrestleMania was in Toronto, so I got sort of that big moment uh, was locally, and so I was able to be involved heavily with that. And uh, best of sports, Tony Parisi, another guy who's long gone. Uh, and this is my final issue, uh, and we listed, this is one of my favorite ones, so we listed everywhere in the world that our newsletter went. So there was all these different states and all these different cities in the states. Uh, internationally, yeah, so we went to England and Denmark and uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, so it got out there. It was uh, something to really be proud of and uh, we put together a great little last issue and uh, it's kind of neat to be able to uh, share this with everyone again and, uh, and, and now it's going to be available electronically. Hey guys, Quinn here. Hope you enjoyed the documentary. I worked hard on it. I also wanted to say that all the wrestling reports mentioned in this video are digitally available on oliverbooks.ca. So I'll leave a link to that in the description as along with a bunch of other things. If you like this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy.